Well, Guarantee Trust Bank's full year pre tax profit rose 35% to 65.6 billion naira. We now cross over to Lagos, Nigeria, where Wale Famuera is standing by with the company's deputy, MD Segun Agbaje. Yeah, thanks a lot, Hannah. Well, you just rolled out what many are calling the bright spot in this bank earnings season. GTB released 2011 numbers last week. Joining me in the studio, take a look at those numbers. It's the CEO, Shegun Abadje. Thank you so much, Shegun, for joining us on the show today. Well, first of all, let me start with the top line. And um, like uh, Hannah just mentioned, your revenues were up 23%. But the fourth quarter, we saw a really, really strong performance. What's, what's really supported that? Well, I think like everything else in life, you're just gathering your momentum. I think we've grown our loan book, we've diversified our funding base, and we've kept our bank very efficient and our costs low. And talking about the cost, that's another very strong um, point for GT. We've seen your cost to income ratios, some analysts putting that 52%, and by far higher than or lower than the rest of the industry. What are you guys doing? Um, we're waste cutting. We're not really <laughs> cost cutting. There's a lot of fat in the system, and we think we can still. Because cut I saw fat. that you even dropped in the fourth quarter. We dropped in the fourth quarter, and hopefully by the first quarter of 2012, we would have dropped some more. We have some very aggressive cut targets, and we are on track to meet them, I believe, in 2012. I think one negative on the numbers, at least that's what analysts are saying, are the provisions relating to the deal with Amcon. Can you just run us through those numbers and see exactly what accounted for those provisions? Because the number was 18 billion for the year, 8 billion in the fourth quarter. Okay, first of all, remember that in 2010, Nigerian banks didn't take any general loan loss provision. So in 2011, about six point something billion of that is your GLLP. Um, our MPLs to total loans are about 3.7. I think that's pretty comfortable. Risk is a part of banking. There will be some provisions come through. For as long as you keep those under 5%, I think we can live with them. Mm. And talk to us about the African expansion strategy. Um, we know you're in several Anglophone countries right now. The last time we spoke, you said you like Africa. Where are you going? Well, you know, I think Africa truly is the next frontier. We are hopefully in the next one month going to open in Ivory Coast. Then over the next three to five years, we're going to pick about nine high-impact countries in Africa. We'll probably do some East Africa, some Central Africa, and then some of the peripheral countries in South Africa. Now, to what extent would that Africa strategy be contributing to the group's numbers? Well, we intend to remain very successful in Nigeria, so over a five-year period, if we can do 10 to 15 percent, we think that will be respectable. Well, sticking with the Africa strategy, I mean, we see some of your your competitors, um, is any bank for instance, they are not bullish on Africa. In fact, the, the impression I get is that the returns are not worth it and that's perhaps why they are not going into it. Why are you going into Africa beyond the returns obviously? Are you seeing about 15% of, of your numbers going forward? Well, I think 15% of group is good, especially if we remain very successful. I also think that connectivities that will happen from being in different African countries, and we started to see it. Multinationals uh, exist in all these countries, and you'll be able to leverage all your different franchises, so maybe some people don't see it. I think that if Africa truly is the next frontier, then you need to be in those countries to on mine the potential that exists. And we know you did do some sales of subsidiaries. Um, extraordinary incomes were about 2.8 billion of the numbers in 2011. Can you just run us through that and what else are you selling? Okay, that's net. Um, we made a little bit more money than that from sale of subsidiaries, but we also wrote down some of our investments in SMEs. Uh, we wrote down like High TV, we wrote down Tinapa, we wrote down something we had invested in cards technology, so was the net. There's only one to go, which is um, GT Homes, and hopefully we'll conclude the sale of that by the end of the first half of this year. So can you give the market any guidance for 2012? Obviously a very strong performance in 2011. If you take out the Amcon transactions, what should we expect this year? Can you give some guidance in terms of profits and cost in particular? Okay, well, 2012, another difficult year, but hopefully we'll be able to grow the loan book by at least 15%. We'll look to grow the profit by at least 25%. Hopefully keep the MPLs under under 5% and keep cost to income sub 50. Hmm. All right, and a, a very, should I say, general point on the industry right now, your thoughts on retail banking and consumer loans in particular. I know it's, it's not very much a big part of your balance sheet, but 
Give us your thoughts on the impact that these credit bureaus could have on the, in that area going forward. Oh, I think the credit bureau is going to be great for retail banking. And retail banking is quite big for us. It's over 40% of our deposit base and over 10% of our loan book, which is quite pretty high when you look at the size of the corporate loans. So I think when we have the credit bureaus, we'll be able to opt that. Realistically, I don't think retail will ever be more than 15% of our loan book, but we'll continue to push it from the deposit side. And it will help the NIMs going forward, definitely. And your investment in fixed income we've seen bonds portfolios become very topical in the banking industry right now uh, obviously you are already um, reporting IFRS and of course the rest of the industry is going to start doing that this this year the impact of that on your balance sheet going forward oh for us nothing I mean we've taken all our mark-to-market -market losses on bonds um, the fixed income portfolio from the Treasury bill perspective is great for the banks and I think you'll see that come through in 2012. It will help the NIMs and hopefully people can absorb their mark-to-market -market losses on their bond portfolios. All right, Shego, thank you so much for joining us. Shego Abadji, CEO of GT Bank, running us through the numbers in 2011 and what to expect in 2012 is back to you, Hannah. Well, thanks, Wale. <coughs>